It was two in the morning. My husband and I were sleeping. And anyone who has small kids knows that sleep is elusive. So you are truly dozing off and praying. Praying that your children will not bust into your master suite, which is the closed-in garage of the house that you grew up in. The house you returned to with your saint of a husband and two young sons so you could take care of your elderly widowed mother. I heard the sound of someone approaching. It wasn't the familiar pitter-patter of the toddler feet, nor the heavier step of the six-year-old. It was the dreaded, a jingle clunk, jingle clunk, sound of my mother schlepping in with her metal cane toward our bedroom. I hoped she would stop by the bathroom, sit on the throne, and return to bed. But no, the steadfast approach of the jingle clunk, jingle clunk, she started yelling my name frantically, because frantically is how we operate, my mother and I. Like my uncle John Vitaliano says, whether you wreck the car, you can't find a pencil. The reaction's the same, frantic. <laughs> so I hear, Dee Dee, Dee Dee. She sounded like she was buying letters from Vanna White on the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> my body tensed and my anger grew as I tried not to scream at her to stop screaming because her screaming is going to wake up the kids and they'll start screaming and then we'll all be screaming. You see, my mama's mind is changing, becoming fuzzy and confused. Her emotions are erratic these days. One minute she's peaceful and singing and then the next she's furious with me because she can't find her lipstick. One minute she's content to eat potato chips and then the next she's ratting out my son because he's watching Spongebob after I told him not to. Her body is giving out, and she's in constant pain because of old people issues that I'm way more familiar with than I should be. Her emotions and health are not my fault, but somehow I feel responsible. And since she and I are the last surviving members of our immediate family, I'm the easiest one for her to blame, and she's the easiest one for me to blame too. I think it's just a case of the reality of life, caring for an elderly parent. And not simply a parent, but a mother. <laughs> a mother and a daughter with issues, codependency issues and enmeshment issues. You see, my mama adopted me when I was five months old. She loved me like I was born of her flesh, and she raised me. She never deserted me, even in the darkest depths of my alcoholism. She never let me go, even when I claimed she didn't love me, and she wasn't my real mother. She never left me and I will never leave her. This is my vow. <laughs> a jingle clunk, a jingle clunk. I just laid there and she yelled, did the baby go into your room? I said, no. She became irate. Well, I saw the baby go into your room and I was following him. And I said, he isn't. And she said, hmm, and fell silent. Then I heard a rumble and a ruckus. And the next thing I see is my mother, horizontal and airborne, about two feet off the ground. And then I heard something that can best be described as a watermelon being thrown onto the floor. Mom had fallen from the top of three concrete steps. I was sure she was dead. But before you get too upset, know this. My mama is a known faller. <laughs> I've seen her take a dive in many places. In front of the customs house back in 87, at church by the flowering cross in 02. The preacher and a few elders resurrected her to an upright position in quick order and joke about her being raised up into newness of life. Hallelujah. <laughs> Down a flight of stairs at a day's end near Six Flags when I was in third grade. She even log rolled onto the gravel parking lot at Shim Creek. When she could still drive, she stopped to pick up a plastic table from the side of the road and fell. That required plastic surgery. So this is not my first barbecue with mom falling, but this is different. She's 81. Now it was my turn to yell. Mom was terrified. She slowly turned her head and said, I fell. <laughs> I said, I see that. <laughs> Relieved she could speak. She was in a lot of pain and kept wailing, something's jabbing me, something is jabbing me. So my husband and I assumed the position on either side of her 
and slowly peeled her off the floor. And under her body was my beloved Swiffer wet jet, <laughs> mangled, bent in half, and destroyed. I said, Mom, why is the Swiffer under you? And she said, I grabbed it because I saw a cockroach. And I tried to kill it with the Swiffer. And I fell. We dusted her off, band-aided her up, gave her a pain pill, and put her to bed. I felt helpless. I felt scared of what is happening and of what more is coming. Mad because her youth is gone and mad because I couldn't focus more on my kids. Mad because I just want her to be my mama and take care of me. I kissed her head and asked her if she needed anything. And she said, I know I'll be hurting tomorrow. <laughs> and she would, and so would I. But before I closed the bedroom door, my husband, my rock and support, yelled, hey, mom, you're off roach patrol. <laughs> Thank you.